This is Yazan Malkosh, and I'll be guiding you through this tutorial. In this series, we're going to be tackling three main aspects of the 3D workflow. Lighting, surfacing, and rendering. You'll need to have basic knowledge of Modo in order to understand the steps in these videos. We've included the product files in this tutorial to be used along with the video. This model was created by Hanin Bashir, one of our former students using Modo. It's been cut down to the elements in this tutorial, and we'll cover this shot that you see here. This is the day shot that we'll be doing, and this is the night shot that we'll be creating. So let's get started. In your architectural series folder, there's a file called shot underscore start dot LXO. We'll want to load that into Moto. And before we delve into the series, I'd like to share a few tips to speed up our workflow. Initially, we'll be working in Moto's Render tab. So navigate to the Render tab here. This provides us with a fast way to navigate through our scene while having interactive viewing of our render. We're going to be tweaking some of the visibility options in the windows to better suit our work. Hover your mouse over the top right view and press O. Make sure to switch inactive meshes from wireframe to same as active mesh. Then go to Visibility, check Show Lights, Show Cameras, and uncheck Show Locators and Show Texture Locators. This will allow us to see lights and cameras in the OpenGL view, but hide any locators or texture locators that we'll be adding. Some people who are used to adjusting textures using locators may want to keep these on. Now we navigate to the bottom at navigation viewport, press O, go to visibility, make sure to also turn on lights and cameras, turn off texture locators and locators. And make sure you set this view to camera view and this view to perspective view. To speed up our interactive render view, click on options and make sure you turn off displacement uncheck never stop rendering and make sure you use multiple threads if those threads are available to you for lighting we'll be dealing with a day shot and a night shot this will give us the chance to test Moto's physical sun in terms of natural lighting for the day shot as well as the photometric lights for artificial lighting for the night shot. We'll be using other light types to improve the lighting of the scene. In terms of surfacing, we'll be tackling a number of different elements such as concrete, wood, fabric, leather, glass, metals, and foliage. And having a wide array of materials, it'll become a good base to build upon our similar materials. And finally, we'll adjust our render settings and get a nice high resolution render out of Modo with multiple render outputs for post-production work. For scene setup, now that we have our workplace set up, let's check out the scene structure. We'll start in the item list. The scene is split into areas and different mesh layers are separated for greater control. For instance, the living room. It can be turned on and off entirely as a single element within the folder. We also have a group for texture locators. And also light fixtures. And they consist of down lighters and up lighters. So this gives us the ability to hide and show these in one click. Finally, we have my, our scene camera. All the settings are default for the camera except for the position, rotation, and focal length. Also, all, all our scene parameters are default. This includes light parameters, scene settings, and shaded tree settings. Switching off to the shader tree. 
Every material by default is set up to have a simple diffuse of 80%, specular at 20, roughness at 40, zero for most of the other settings, 100% bump, 20% displacement d distance, smoothing 100%, and smoothing angle of 60 degrees. Base shader is also default. So is the final color, alpha, and render settings. Global illumination or indirect illumination is off by default. You can see that different materials have different colors. This makes it easier to switch between materials. And we'd like to add one more material to the top of the base of the shader tree. We'll call this clay material. So click on the name twice. Not double click, but click selection and then click again to access the renaming option. leave it with its default settings. This will block out my initial lighting without having to worry about what the surface is going to look like. Nice thing is you can also stick it at the top of the layer of the tree. You can turn it on and off at any time. To ease navigation through all of materials, we're going to go to the shader tree, filter, and check on filter on selection. This will filter out all the materials for non-selected items meaning I can concentrate on parts of the meshes. So if I select the chair, it will only show the four materials associated with that chair. If I select the cabinet, it will do the same. If I shift select more than one item, it will show those materials as well. So for light blacking, our initial step is to set up our daylight shot. To do this, we'll, we'll need to have openings from which the light could enter. Currently, if I click on my glass window, it isn't transparent. There is a glass material, but as you can see, it's got a default diffuse and no transparent amount. So the first thing we want to do is grab the material mask and drag it above the base shader. We won't set up the glass material just yet. We're just going to make the material invisible to the scene. So add layer, select shader, and turn off all the attributes at the bottom. This will basically take my glass material out of the equation for now. We'll revisit the shader later on. So flip to render tri view if you aren't there already. You'll notice the environment is visible and the glass panels are not. The default directional light is also visible. We can manually set up the light position and rotation, but instead we're going to make use of Moto's physical sun. Reset the light position so we can see the, the this light in the viewport if, if you haven't already. So make sure these are all zeros and make sure these are all zeros. We're going to zoom out of our viewport select directional light. Under directional light properties check physical sun on. Adjust the location according to your need by using the preset cities or adjusting longitude and latitude and GMT time zone. We're going to pretend we're in Luxology headquarters in California. Maybe it's Brad's house that we're doing right now. Adjust the date to suit your need. We're going to choose a strong summer sun. So we're going to change this to July 07. 
we're going to go to mid of the month and we're going to leave the time at 12. The lighting is going to currently come in through the beams and it's being blocked by the curtains as well. You'll notice the shadows are a bit harsh so we'll soften it by increasing the spread angle and this is just to give the sunlight a little bit of fuzziness especially for shadows that are far away from the object. We usually don't go very high in the range, something between the 0.5 to 2. So let's stick with 0.5. And that'll just give us some nicer shadow edges. Whenever you're using physical sun, you can actually adjust the north offset and this will basically give you a new north, the default north by is, the default north is negative z so that would be north, east, west and south towards the camera. By adjusting this you're also adjusting the sun position. We're going to set it back to zero. So before we move on, we're going to add some additional lighting. And we're going to be using area lights to emphasize indirect lighting coming from the environment and surroundings. Now this might not be physically correct, but it will give me a great flexibility in lighting my shot. Photographers use lights and reflectors and rigs to perfect lighting in their shot to convey a mood or focus on an object. Architectural rendering isn't any different. The first area light will be positioned outside the window. So the first thing you want to do is go to items. Let's add a new item. Area light. We'll drag it all the way out. rotate to 90 degrees I'm going to switch to our right view press W to get the move tool now by clicking on these cyan handles we're able to stretch the light to encompass the entire window Switch to top view. There we go. Get it closer. You can see that some of the light has already started to leak in. This one light is going to be enough to cover all five windows. There's no need to create one per opening. And having one is easier to adjust the size of the light and its properties. Now click on that, right click on the area light and select instance. and choose front press W again take it up over the beams rotate it to the same approximate angle as the beams we're going to, need to stretch this out a little bit more so grab the sign handle and drag it to the right Go to the original area light and take this down to 1.5. We're going to turn off simple shading. This will give us more real distribution of the light through the rectangle shape. 
It will increase render time, so if you don't need it, you can always have simple shading on. But I feel that we need it for this shot. You can see there's a lot of noise, and while some of the textures will hide the noise, we're going to increase the samples to 50, just to clear things out. This would be a good time to do a test render. So go to render. The reason I added only one area light as opposed to five per opening or for, for the whole window is we actually did some rendered tests and this is something that you do a lot uh, when you're doing renderings. And it turns out that it's faster render times if you just have one light. If you have one light, we had to increase it to 50. If you had per light, you might have to increase it to something, maybe 25 or 30, just to get the same amount of noise level. Now, we're not looking for 100% free noise. We understand that some of it is going to be gone by the time we add all our elements. An easy way to test for noise is click in your render in an area where there's going to be a lot of noise and drag your samples up. Let's go up to 200 and do a render test. So this will only render out this area. We're almost to the noise free settings. Click to 300. And there you see the differences between this area, here, and here. You can select somewhere else that has noise, preferably a darker area. As you can see, there's a huge increase of quality. Click anywhere to let go of your region, and let's close the render. So the next thing we want to do is add another light just behind the camera. So the camera is situated right about here. We're going to add one more area light. Press W, and move it close to this opening. We're going to rotate again, so negative 90. Let's go to right view, or left, and make it to the same approximate size of the opening. Now what we don't want to do is place this light outside the window, as this will start take into consideration creating ray traced shadows of these blinds. Since we're, this window is not visible and the shadows are not that visible either, we're going to speed things up by dragging it inside the scene, just behind the camera. And you don't have to turn off simple shading or increase the samples. Let's just rename this to indirect outside and we'll rename the first ones that we created in direct inside. We're going to tone down the light to 1. As you can see it's now starting to light the areas facing the camera. So let's select all three lights, press Control G, and this will group our lights in one, one folder. Click on the folder, and we'll call it Indirect Lights. And 
take it up. Let's move on to global illumination and the environment. Go to the shader tree. Now that we've set up the lighting rig, it's time to take advantage of Moto's GI engine. So we're going to switch to render global illumination settings and turn on GI. We're going to leave it with its default settings at this point. You'll notice that we're getting pretty good results with the lighting, but it's a bit bland. We could turn on second bounce for indirect bounces, but this is going to cost us a lot of time. So instead, we're going to use Moto's indirect range to brighten things up and, f and fake a second bounce, if you will. If we use a small number, let's say 0.1, the, loom's gonna, the room's going to look very dull. The lighting is going to be looking very unrealistic. And there's no shadows, and it's almost cartoony, if you may. We're going to have to basically introduce the environment color and the light inside, but to fall off with an indirect range. So we're going to increase the number to something that's more reasonable, like 4 meters. Now we get additional bounce for the fraction of the time. How do we put indirect bounces to 2 or higher? One thing you'll notice is that the color is hideously blue and green. And this is coming from the environment that's surrounding it. So whatever the color of the environment is going to be the color of the inside from the indirect range and the global illumination. So let's remedy that by going to the environment, expand the environment. Let's change the environment type from a four color gradient to physically based daylight. And let's make sure our sunlight is the direction of light that we chose. And now you'll see that the natural hue of the sky and the difference it made on the overall feeling of the scene. And the sun color has already, has already also changed. So if I click global illumination off, you'll actually notice the sun has a nice yellow hue to it. Now let's go to the area lights and change their color. We're going to change to a nice light blue. Not too much color, just a nice blue. So I have a settings of 82 or 0 0.82, 0 0.91, and 1. And we want to turn their specular off for now. If there are any blown areas in your scene, this is the time to do a neutral check. Basically, you want to grab the levels down so there's no um, blown out areas. Now, to be fair, all the settings are at 80%. And most likely, they're going to go down, not up. So don't go too low in the lighting because you're going to have to come bring it up back up once the textures get done. You just want a natural, good overall lighting system at this point. So right now we're going to move on to surfacing. This will be a good time to adjust the gamma and the final color output, just to give us more contrast and less, and less blanding view. It will make the colors richer and less washed out. Before we do a test render of this final light blocking shot, I noticed that there are some noise issues here and here. So what we want to do is bring these lights closer. And this one also closer. Now you want the light to be approximately the same length of the window for the top and the side window okay, encompassing the entire window opening area. When you have that set up we also want to go to the second indirect outside light 
and change the color to an also another nice blue tone and turn off specular to zero. Once you have all of that set up, save the scene as light shot light blocking. And we'll do a test render and get back to that.